Hi there. My name is Wally. I actually, uh, before we start the actual experiment, which this video is about, I'm going to show some things that you're going to see. Um, this all started out when uh, a couple of days ago I was working, about to start working on a tank. I was going to stand on this little stool down here uh, and uh, start to uh, raise those lights and get my arms in there to clean up my tank, which I did. Now, before I actually got in there, I started preparing a different area and I touched my finger um, close to the water and I felt a little bit of tingle. So I started investigating and eventually I started pulling all the plugs that you see here one by one. Uh, there's a few power bars. Everything is protected. But eventually I ended up pulling out something out of here, which led to me to find that a pump was defective and putting voltage into my tank. Things didn't trip as they normally should with a GFCI circuit breaker. And that's because uh, this particular ground probe, which I have over the other tank there beside it, connected by water, was in, in there when I removed it and didn't put it back to a different maintenance. This is what a ground probe looks like. It's a titanium tip because you don't want to put uh, copper into your tank. Um, it's not good for the corals. It will uh, corrode. And uh, in general, it's not a good thing. So. This is where normally the other end of the ground probe, which attaches to your um, house circuit ground. And when this probe is in the tank, like this, uh, it will basically ground the water. You can put it in different locations as long as it's touching the water. You want to place it below the water line so that if you're draining the tank, it's always submerged. Um, as I mentioned, the pump that I had failed. But it, it doesn't have to always be a pump. You'll see in the video the actual pump. I'm using it. But sometimes things like heaters. This is actually a pretty... I could not tell. This heater is sealed. I cut off the cord so I never use it. But in there, it slowly, and you can still see, it's filled with water. At some point in time, this was sitting in my tank. And it didn't fail right away. Uh, but it did cause some voltage and I got a small shock. Actually, at that time I didn't get a small shock. I was with the pump this time. But that caused my GFCI to trip. And um, I investigated and found out that it was this defective heater. Um, this is what a GFCI uh, outlet looks like. Um, if you always want to buy good quality. You always want to buy UL listed and CSA approved. I'm not an expert. I'm just telling you, do your research and get a good GFCI outlet. Um, the ground pro you've seen, and you've made comments that sometimes, you know, there's different kinds of heaters. These glass ones tend to break, they go on the seals, like this one didn't actually crack, but it went on the seal uh, somewhere. Uh, I got a replacement from the company, they were nice enough to send me one. Um, I still don't like the glass ones because they can they get hit by rocks or sharp or hard objects. This titanium probe is actually safe, just like the titanium tip to put into your tank water. Um, this one actually failed on me. Uh, it didn't fail in the sense of being open and um, exposing the voltage to the tank. When I investigated, it is still sealed, uh, but it actually burned out. So if you leave it out of the water for too long, uh, it could actually, uh, I think I left it on the floor at one point, I was moving between uh, heating up the water and I left it out too long and the inside burned out, but at least it's still safe. If I put this into uh, the outlet, stick it in my tank, it won't work, but at least it's still sealed. It's not cracked. So that's it, that's the intro. And then the next part All is right. the actual I test. I haven't done a YouTube video where I've talked before, so pardon uh, any slip ups I do here. The only slip I don't wanna do is any electrical mistakes here. So what we're doing here today is, I had a little bit of a shock from my fish tank a couple of days ago. And there was some discussion about GFCI outlets. So I put a brand new GFCI outlet here. And uh, basically it's wired properly. You can actually test the GFCI outlet by pressing the test button. You heard that click. If I turn this light slightly sideways, you could actually see that if I reset it, it goes through a red and then it goes to a green. So that's how you test it. it means the GFCI is working. I reset it and we're ready to test. So I got three buckets here, which I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment. 
My first bucket, well, actually that's, that's the bucket of salt water. I didn't want to waste salt water, so I siphoned off some cyan off my tank, and we'll use some cyano salt water. Um, I'll prove that to you that it's salt water here. I got my salinity probe here, and it should rise eventually once it stabilizes to about 30, sorry, 53. It'll get there. The point is, it's, it's salinity, and it has salt in it, so very conductive. Next, we have tap water. Should be very close to zero. This meter doesn't actually go down to zero no matter what, uh, but it is basically not saline. Next one, last experiment. I got some RO water, RODI. And uh, this one here is a little bit lower. Best way to test RODI and tap water is with a TDS. So I'm just gonna go here. I got my TDS meter here. I turn it on and I got a zero there. The, the TDS should be very close to zero. Now they did get some contaminants from the bucket, but it's about 14. The top water should rise much higher, about 25. And I don't really want to test the TDS meter in my salt water because it can ruin the, the probe tip. So uh, we got the GFCI. In order to show that it's running, that light bulb there, a light will be on well, as long as the GFCI is on. So if I trip the GFCI, actually that's the reset. Trip, it's off. If I reset it, the light bulb comes back on. So we're going to do the same, but now we're going to use the faulty pump that kind of gave me a zap in the fish tank. It's right here. I can actually put the tripod on the camera so I can have my hands free. I want to have good hands free. So, there's the crack. Now, I can't really see it on the pump. It actually looks like the housing, but I know that this is the pump that I actually had to pull in order for the electricity to stop showing up in my fish tank. So now I'm going to test. I'm going to put this pump actually into the salt water because that's the best way to start. Now it may take time for the salt water to actually get in to the pump wherever that crack is to slowly seep into it. So I assume that when I drop this pump in here I'm actually going to plug it in and just to make things a little safer I've actually we'll start off the test and we'll see that the titanium ground probe should instantly trigger if that pump is faulty. And then what I'll show is when, if it does trigger, I haven't actually done this, I'm doing this the first time. If it does trigger, and you'll know it's triggered the GFCI when that light bulb goes out. So let's try it. We're going to turn on the pump. I'm standing back and got to get my polarity right here. There you go. That is a faulty pump. Now, if I take out the probe, no more grounding, that pump will continue and will actually run. Oh, of course, I got a trip. Reset the breaker. Lights back on. I'm about to go. Well, seems like the Coralia pump has somehow sealed itself up. It's not faulting anymore. We saw a fault earlier and I would say other than the fact that I crisscrossed the wires a hundred percent this was what was causing my GFCI to trip in my fish tank. It was what was causing me to get the feeling of electricity when my fingertip touched it. I know I don't trust this thing. The fact that it has cracks I will test it more but to continue this experiment I've got an old broken maxi jet and basically I'm going to show what happens is for example a cord gets frayed so the hot wire is the smaller prong always. I'm going to trace the hot wire all the way back to the pump like this so I know which side it is and basically that's it's a busted it's, it does actually totally open. I'm actually going to do what an urchin does happened to me once. He basically chewed off the insulation off one side 
of thing. So now I got shiny copper sticking out of the pump. So obviously this is an electrified uh, fish tank or salt water. 100% that's going to have electricity. We're going to see it light up in the sense of showing uh, some voltage, if not a lot, uh, going to the ground. And when I plug it in, because the ground probe is in there, it's giving me safety, we're going to see that light bulb go out. Should. Let's see what happens. Instantly. All right. So now I'm going to remove the ground probe now and basically show what happens when you don't put your finger inside of a fish tank and it's off the ground insulated just like on that uh, piece of dry core there. The tank is not grounded because the ground probe is not in there. You don't have a piece of grounded equipment in there. You don't have it sitting on the concrete and even then glass is insulating the tank. So I'm going to actually plug this in after I reset my GFCI and you're going to see the voltage on there. Yes, first of all, it may not trip, it may trip depending how much conductivity or how well these things work. So let's find out. I never did this before. There we go. I know for sure that that has got an open wire touching it. And as soon as I, now there's no voltage being picked up for whatever reason, there's no difference between that and ground. But as soon as I drop that ground probe in, this is what's going to happen. And that's the point I was trying to make in the forums that you can have a defective open circuit high voltage pump running in your tank and it's causing whatever heat from the openness. The copper is exposed, it's going into your corals and it continues to run. So if you don't have a ground probe in there, it's not going to trip. So let's do the same experiment here and I'm going to unplug it because I forget this is very... It's not on. I, that light bulb is telling me that it is not on. Now I'm going to put in fresh water. Same thing. I'm going to electrify it. I'm going to get that ground probe ready. Should do the same thing. It's going to show that the conductivity, conductivity is just as good as, well not as good as salt water, but enough to protect you when you're having a shower and you drop uh, a hair dryer in your bathtub. So here we go. Reset. Light bulb's on, plug it in, and as soon as we drop the ground probe in, it trips. So, water's conductive, tap water. Now we're going to do the same with RO. Don't know if that's showing up on the video camera. Here we go, RO. That's got electricity in there. Drop the ground probe in. Oh, I didn't uh, hang on. I did not reset things. Right. Okay, light bulb's on. Electricity will come on when I put this in the right way. And will the ground probe protect us in our old bathtub? Sure will. So that's it. Just want to show that uh, how a ground probe works on GFCI and how your tank actually can be live with electricity. If that GFCI is faulty and doesn't do what it just did here, you could be electrocuted. So obviously it's better that the ground probe is in there to shut off the equipment before you put your hand to find out that it's not working. All right, unless you wanna be that guy who, uh, who uses electricity to wake up in the morning, but I don't think that was true.